Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilaus. This is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve as an engineer in Factorio. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the Coverex enrichment process. And each of these episodes starts as a workshop session streamed live on my Twitch channel. This is over at twitch.tv slash Nilaus. And you're well, very welcome to drop by. This usually happens on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time, so feel free to drop by and help design, decide, decide and discuss upcoming guides. If you like this video and want to see more of it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for con more content like this. If you have ideas, comments or feedback, you're welcome to use the comment section below or join the Discord server or the live stream. The weird thing about the Coverex enrichment process is that it actually takes something that was used to be a very scarce resource and makes it into a super abundant resource that you'll never have to worry about. So that's a bit weird. So let's dive in. I'm going to show you demonstrate two different builds with two different pros and cons. Let's dive in. So here we are in the game. Let's start by taking a look at the actual process. This is here, coverage enrichment process. And we are also going to look at the research coverex. That is here, is named after the lead developer of Factorio. Kind of weird in, in my opinion, but you know, it is what it is. 1500, so it's kind of pricey, but it's one of those uh, production signs you would like to get up and running because uh, as I showed in my nuclear power tutorial, you can easily start running like a small nuclear power plant off without using Corex enrichment. But before you start making 10, 20, 30 nuclear power plants, you probably want this one, uh, this one operational so you can take the uranium 235 and just not worry about it anymore let's have a look at what the process actually does don't mind all the crap in the inventory that's just always how it is and now everyone's looking uh, so this is one of the two weird recipes where the inputs and the outputs are the same the other one is oil liquefaction so you can see here it takes 40 uranium 235 this is the rare material that only spawns on a 0.7 percent chance and five of the very, very abundant uranium-238. And it gives us 41 uranium-235 and two uranium-238. So at a net rate, it basically gives us, takes three uranium-238 and gives us one uranium-235. That's a pretty good deal. And was something we'd always want to do. Not always, until we run out of one of those, but we definitely want to do this. And uh, the, the shortcoming is that you need 40 uranium-235 to get started. That has a long crafting time. And so those are kind of the things that we have to work around. I think the intention was that you build this and then just like slowly over time, you will build up a stockpile of a few more. But that's just not how Factorial players work, is it? We are going to uh, smash the hell out of this with beacons and modules and just get uh, get this, just get enough of this so we don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to demonstrate two builds because one of the issues here is since this one has 40 inputs, this is going to be really rare. So you've probably been stockpiling or you should have been stockpiling this while you are, you're starting your uranium mining. You want to stockpile these and put 40 aside so you can start this process up. The issue is that when you build a design, in the normal way that assemblers work and also centrifuge is that it will fill up to twice what is needed so it'll have one that is working on the progress bar plus it'll fill up two times as much so this one can actually hold 120 something uh, items in here which is not super beneficial and that's going to be the difference between our simple build which is not so efficient and our more complex build which is super efficient in that regard but requires some circuit circuit magic let's start with sort of the base design of how we want to operate this thing the first thing i want to talk about is modules you absolutely want productivity modules into this because it is a slow working time and going from one uranium every 60 seconds to 1.2 uranium every 60 seconds is a pretty good deal. It's, you guessed it, 20% improved productivity. Great work. The one thing that you should be in mind, keep in mind is that with recipes like this, with both input and output, it is only the net difference, the net positive difference that will be applied the productivity bonus. So it's not all the 41 uranium that you get productivity bonus from. It's only the difference between the 41 and the 40. So that's only one. Likewise, or not likewise, but contrary to that, you will not get negative three uranium 238 and get that applied because that's basically just counted as an input. So 
this one this works exactly as you maybe would expect that you get this applied to one extra so you will spawn one extra uranium uh, at 20 percent ratio the other thing to keep in mind is that once you build this and you put your first 40 uranium 235 in you can see the progress power up and you might go like uh you know what i actually i actually want this one maybe over there then you have destroyed the content of the centrifuge and your first 40 uranium are gone. So keep that in mind. Once you start it, don't pick it up. You want to make sure that it ends the productivity or ends the production of the single recipe and then take it uh, and move it. Otherwise you lose the content. This is really ex uh, important since it is very expensive. Now let's dive into the actual build. I want to build here some inputs and some outputs. And this doesn't need to be blue belts, but at this uh, rate of the game, I'm just making a blue belt. But if you take my blueprints that I'm providing, link in the description below, and you don't have blue belts, then you just stamp it down and then replace them with yet red belts. Pretty simple. Nothing magical about that. So what I want to do is I want to have... Mm -hmm, I can kind of see that one of those assemblers have... Our inserts have not been put there. So I'm just going to put it here. I just want one of these to pick up just slowly it's it's a so slow running time that you're just gonna pick up and i'm gonna set uh do i have one of these magical here this is a magical inserter we use for test purposes just so that you can see this one on the outside i want the dark uranium and on the inside i want the light uranium there right so that's how i want things to work and this one is always already chucking along and yes perfect it did not start so what i actually do i want it to start and uh, then what i want to do is i want to make sure that everything that goes in goes out on this belt that means it goes out on the outside belt only so i here i'm constrained by the speed of the outside belt oops sorry uh, then i'm taking this but this one will only it could take both of them but i don't want that I only want this one to pick up the uranium because this one's outputting 41 and I want this one to pick up the 41 so we should see when this one completes now you can see how slow it is this is working at 0.7 speed and the crafting time is 60 seconds so that's uh, gonna be quite a while so this is the obvious location for us to add more beacons and uh, that's um, yeah that one you can add four beacons on either side for this build. There, there. And now the crafting speed is 4.7. Much nicer. Look how fast it goes. And then we watch as it goes out. First, it sets out these, which will just go on. And then it goes in and you can see it now has one additional crafted. All right. So what is it we want to do afterwards? Well, at some point, this one will be full. As I mentioned, uh, if we look at this, it'll only fill up. Boom, to 85 or to 80 something, depending on the stack uh, flow back and forth. And the rest will just be stuck out here on the belt. So I want these two items to go in here, but I want them filtered correctly. So I want to make sure that that one, I'm just going to remove the stuff on the belt. And that means, right, so now let's see, it works. And that one goes on in here. So what I want to do is I just want to grab this and then if I put it here, then it goes on the inside belt. Perfect. And uh, the thing is there will be a surplus of the light, light green. So I want to put it into a storage box, a filtered storage box. So that when the, this belt here, there, now it'll start filling up here. And this means this part is what available to the network. And you can now see that it takes quite a while before this one makes anything available because we have now it's actually stuck. Yeah, one of those got stuck. Oh, it got stuck because this one couldn't output. Ah, that was why. Yeah, see, that's that's the second thing we want to deal with. Well, the thing is, it can be easily dealt with like this. And now we are missing the other one. So we'll put those down here. Because that's the thing. This one will actually consume consume more than it has available. And we need to supplement that. Supplementing that is also pretty easy. You can just do it like this. 
So it goes on the other side. I'm going to set this. Yeah. Like that. The reason why this is important is when you see this one cycle, cycle through, then these two will block the inserter. And the inserter will only top up. In this case, it might even be better just to... Just for illustration purposes, just take a small inserter here, because it never will be. So this is a small, compact little place. If you want power poles here, I could do it like that. That will cover everything. And, uh, and that's basically it. Now, the one thing that you should keep in mind about this one, and that's how much is actually wasted before anything goes into this one. So we could harvest five out of this, but in the network, we have all of this. We have the 40 being currently being crafted plus we have in this case 90 being stored here so those 90 could be out there and make three uh, nuclear power nuclear bombs for us and uh, help out purge the natives uh, from the from our planet and the good thing about this one is if i just stem that that one down we don't even need this and we can put some lights in here as well and uh, obviously i'd want that here and we'd want at least one more so this should pretty much be a module that we can just stamp down like that. So now we have four of those. And to be honest, I don't think you're gonna need more than this. This one, uh, each of these is supporting, when it's running at full speed, it will it will support 263 nuclear reactors. I mean, time this, this will support a thousand nuclear reactors. But as you can see here, this is also one of the shortcomings of it. This one has 80 in here that's not being used. You know, those 80 could actually be used for up here, starting this one and starting that one. So I'm going to take this and put those in just... There we go. So this is the very simple build. I think that this is the one that I would normally use and then just start them because look at when they start. They will actually... Only the dark uranium will flow past and the rest will pick up whatever it has inside. That was 60 before, now it's 61. This one was eight, now it's nine, and so on. When we see another iteration, this was 61, so we should go see it at 62. It is 62. So this one, you now have built a, a Cobrex process that can support 100 nuclear reactors, and it will automatically give you the surplus here. Uh, the one thing you should keep in mind is that at some point the belts cannot transport things fast enough so you cannot extend this infinitely but if you put it up to four you're using a bit, quite a bit of power but you will also just have a lot of this and if you really push comes to shove you can always just go in and pick up something manually here that's uh, the other side of things you can always pick it up here but it does take a while before it actually by itself starts outputting something into this box that requires all of this to be done and this belt to fill up and only then do you get something new in here so while this is running we and uh, before we dive into the second which is a way more advanced but also i think uh, a bit cooler way of doing it which does uh, prevent this issue of having uh, a lot of internal storage and then i just take like to take a moment to thank all the patrons who are helping make this uh, channel a reality it is because of the patrons who are supporting the channel that i am able to make these videos make the let's play the streaming all that so thank you very much to all the patrons who are helping support me and the channel and if you want to support there's of course no obligation but if you want to there is a link to to patreon maybe somewhere on the screen and it, otherwise in the link in the description below thank you very much now, as you can see, this one takes quite a while before we even start getting anything outbound, even though there's honestly quite a lot that we could have taken out. Isn't there a way to solve that through circuit magic? Well, thank you for asking, because that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to start from the same place, and we're going to do something different. We are going to say we are only going to have one, because they produce so damn fast that one should actually easily be able to fulfill all of our needs and if we need more we can always just scale up so we'll build this one this is a 12 beacon module this is the fastest you can make in one of these machines it is 6.7 speed and we're going to build basically like a small example of this of the same thing except we're going to do some i think so we're going to take that one actually we're going to take the whole thing including the constraint we're going to put it here and that 
Yeah, so what we're seeing here is now we're topping up with that. And we want to be able to put it in. And we want to be able to get this one outbound. So we make sure that we control that it's only the dark uranium that goes on this side. Obviously, we want to do the light uranium on the other side. And that needs to get in. So the choice and color of the SM assemblers or inserters is actually important. This one must be a fast inserter. The reason why it must be a fast inserter is that if it's a stack inserter, it will pick up more than you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then it'll start drawing in from this one, which means this one will actually backlog and cannot output anymore. So it, this one has to be taking smaller swings inside here. That's really important. So this one must be blue. These ones must be, uh, this is kind of relevant, but this one must be white and this one must be green. All right. So at this point, we want to do that, but also prioritize that anything that goes out stays here and goes back in. And only when there's already something stuck at this side, then the inserter will start filling it to the side path. And that side path is where we then take things out into our storage. Now, if you look at this one and start feeding things in, I actually want to do it with uh, this one because I think that's going to be easier. Uh, that one. So this one is just a test thing just to get it off the ground. You can see this one is okay. Now, the problem here is that this one will actually, as I put in more, it'll do exactly the same and start putting them in here. That's not great. So what we want to do, uh, let me just do that one. Let's just see how that works now. When it goes one iteration out, everything that comes out can be picked up. Great. And it now has plus one. So what, uh, what we want here is we want to have this one to count to 40 so that it only picks up 40 and then when it reaches 40, that just stop. In order to do that, we're going to have to do some circuit magic. Let's do this one. If we're going to take this condition, if this is greater than zero, then output the input. This is basically how you build a counter. I'm going to take a green wire inbound yeah now this one's actually uh, stuck here uh, no it's it's not picking up at all and then all of it goes out there that's uh, that's okay I'm gonna empty all of this out so that we are sure that we don't have any residuals anywhere all right so I'm, I'm gonna need this one not to enable disable but to read the content and pulse signal sent for one tick when the item is picked up. Now, if you are not familiar with circuit networks in general, maybe this build is not for you. You can always copy paste it and put it in and it's gonna work. But there will be another masterclass covering circuits, which I haven't done yet, but it will come. So don't worry, it's uh, it's in the scripting phase, scripting and testing phase. Right, so let's uh, see this now. This It is enabled always, because there's no enable condition. So it's always enabled and it will pulse. So we want to see what this one is getting inbound output. In order to do that, we are going to feed it some materials here. It just keeps counting. Perfect, 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 perfect. Now we can do it better. We can actually change things there. We can now set this one, give it a condition that says you are only allowed to pick up when you are less than 40. So as soon as it reaches 40, it's not going to pick up anymore. And now I want this one to go away. I want this to be empty. And mm, actually, I really wanted it to. All right. It, this needs to be completely empty. So this value is 154. The way that you reset this one, generally, you can just pick it up and undo. Then it re it's reset and the wires will reconnect. So what we'd like to do is, actually, this is not a great way to do it. Um, I'd much rather have us actually put, uh, 
I want half a stack. Here, 50. I want to put 50 in there as output. Now let's see what happens. Counting. Boom. Counts to 41. 41, that's still close enough. It always There's always like a tick of a calculation here. So what we've done now is work it brilliant for one time. So this one can now count how many it has picked up and it can stop when it reaches 40. So the other thing we need is a reset condition. Something that makes it go back to zero and go on. The important thing is that this one is 41, but that put 40 in, but there is one. So it's still counting correctly. It just has one tick where it counts that I can still accidentally put one extra in. That is the way it is. It, uh, it, the, the, what I tick is one sixtieth of a second, and that's the time it takes for one of these to calculate. So it gets an input, calculates it, puts it back. That takes one sixtieth of a second. During that one sixtieth of a second, one additional one is put in sometimes. So <clears throat> what we can do for a reset condition, we can actually use this one because we are always, without exception, outputting two here every time. So if I take the amount of materials output, we'll use the red wire just to distinguish it. This one will again not be enabled. It's always gonna work, but it's gonna read what it outputs, pulse. So it sends in here and says, whatever you get in, I'm gonna multiply, it's always gonna get two in. I'm gonna multiply it by minus 20. That means I get the value two in because it outputs two of these uranium multiplied by minus 20. Then I get minus 40 and I'm gonna output it as a uranium 235 signal. And I'm gonna wire it in on the red wire back in here. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I am, when this swings with two, I have to do that so I'm sure that it can swing. Uh, I'm gonna do this one, two. And I'm going to take these two. So when I put this in here, this is 41. We will see that this one, when I put it here, this will swing out, send a signal of two dark uranium, will be multiplied by minus 20. That will send a signal of minus 40. This one will go down to plus one, and then it'll start working again. Of course, it won't work very much because it'll only pick up what's on the belt. Let's see. Yes. So, of course, we can't see it. It's so fast, but it sent the signal. This one reset to one, and it picked up the seven that were remaining on the belt. Excellent. So now we think we have all of the wire conditions up and running. This is good. And the only thing we need is to do the start condition. I want to have the start condition as exactly 40, because that's the whole benefit of this one, is that it works with 40. And then anytime we produce more than one, that will be output. That is actually not true. Because uh, it actually doesn't work with 40. It works with 40 plus this part has to be full. So let's see. This one is... This one needs to be reset. There we go. It's reset. There's This has no zero value. This one is zero. It's very important that we make sure that things are conditioned correctly. And... Here, that's 50. And I'm gonna just manually set them in here. And we should see that it stopped working. And in excess. Oh, okay, don't do that. Ah! All right, let's see here. 41, yeah? One outbound. One in here. That was because of the productivity we actually got to. And then what's, let's watch it. 25, 37, 40. This counts to 40 and this one is empty. And now another two are outbound here. So this, this way here is using a lot less in here in this area to, uh, to operate. So every time there is another cycle, it will actually put out something that you can use in the remainder of your base. And that means you can, you don't have to wait until this one stockpiles. I mean, this one hasn't even stock started outputting anything yet. Of course you can say, well, it doesn't matter if it takes an hour or something. I can always just take these out here. All right, but it's starting to stockpile here, just slowly, slowly starting to stockpile. Well, starting to stockpile up here. But this one, 
will immediately start outputting into your network. And with this one, if this is working all the time, well, by the way, we should also just get a power pole. I would just place the power pole up here. There's room for it and it covers everything. So one of the two things about this, is it tileable? Well, obviously it is. You just put it like this and you can share beacons. Boom. You just have to seed it yourself manually, but that's a, that's just a, a one-time thing. So until it starts flowing the other way, there, and now it's uh, it's operational. This one, so easily tidable. This one, if it's running 100%, which it isn't running 100%, but because uh, you see that there's a small start. But if it was already 100%, it would uh, it would be able to support 375 nuclear reactors. That's a lot. So I don't think you need to scale this up to multiple of these. But if you want to, you can do that if you uh, if you feel so inclined. But let's say it's probably around 300 nuclear reactors. This alone can serve. So here you have it, the two different builds that uh, I sort of have a different flavor to it. This one is easy to set up, doesn't require any circuit logic or anything to that matter. But on the other hand, it um, it has a much longer lead time until it actually starts outputting things. And this one, on the other hand, is outputting easily, but you have to be quite proficient with circuits in order to design this correctly. So that's, uh, that's going to be sort of the Factorial Masterclass on Kovarik's Enrichment. I hope you are enjoying this, and if you are, then be sure to hit the like button. That means a lot for the visibility of the videos and also for me to see that the, these videos are actually relevant and interesting. And if you haven't already, then maybe it's time to hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. There's tons of factorial content and other content as well coming uh, your way. And of course, if you want to be part of the design process or have good ideas about future masterclass videos, then I encourage you to drop by on my Twitch channel. I'm streaming this these type of workshops on Monday evenings over at Twitch TV slash Nilaus and it's 8 p.m. Central European time or there's always my streaming time Mondays it's workshops Tuesday Thursdays and Sundays it's a let's play over on Twitch also really cool uh, want you to check it out and of course come hang out in our discord and uh, yeah I'll see you guys around until next time take care and stay effective